Hello, I'm David Wormsey. In this video, I'm taking a look at Beaver Builder theme author templates, which I suspect has been around as long as Beaver Builder, but it's something I've only become aware of and started using in the last year. There is a Beaver Builder knowledge base article that explains everything you need to know. At first glance, it may be look a little overwhelming, but it's very simple indeed. And what it does is it allows theme authors, people who create WordPress themes, a way of being able to bundle in Beaver Builder and add into that package their own custom templates in exactly the same way that when we install Beaver Builder, we have some page templates and we also have some pre-built row templates and the media content of those templates is all accessing a central site that Beaver Builder have. So this works in exactly the same way. But I think this is really useful to freelancers and agencies as well. So let me just show you this in action. This is what I've set up. So when I go into this starter theme here, I've got in my own theme author templates over here. In fact, I've unset the Beaver Builder default so it goes straight into mine and I'll show you how you can do that. So here they are, they give a nice little preview. All these previews are on my master site. I can do exactly the same with some rows. I've only got one here and again the same with modules. If you didn't see my last video that I did on Beaver Junction, you might want to check that out because there's some interesting things I think we'll now be able to do with modules. Anyway, why I think I like this as an approach other than using what we've already had. So we've already had a way of being able to save any of our templates and then via tools, we can export those as an XML file and import those into a new site. The problem is with those, let me just show you here, is that, well, for one, a client can, any that we create, there's a little X that goes with it, and a client can just delete these. So I really see the theme author templates as something that are gonna be the reusable design components that we want for all of our sites, where these save templates as a sort of temporary experimental thing where it doesn't matter too much if a client deletes them. And you can see here, there's not much in the way, uh, by default anyway, of being able to preview these things. Now, I did a video before I really was aware of theme author templates where I showed how you could add some CSS to make these bigger, which I thought was really cool, but you're still left with the problem of how you show your image, your little preview. You're probably gonna, at least by default, need to add that to the client's media library, which is a little bit confusing. If you don't like that, then you're gonna either need to add in some code or a plugin so you can reference a central site instead. So, you know, it's troublesome. I think it's better to separate these things out. So I'm now trying to build up a bit more of a library of designs or components that I'm going to reuse all the time just to speed up my work. So the hardest bit about setting all this up is probably just organizing your central site where everything's going to reference. So in my case, I experimented a little bit. I set it up on a subdomain, which are called designs. I started with templates and I realized that my naming for these things probably ought to be starter designs, which is what I used to refer to, rather than templates, which sound kind of cheap and cheerful. So that's something I decided to do. On this site, and I won't go into it, I've used posts instead of pages for all of my experiments. So I've allowed the page builder to work on posts, and I've removed the header and the footer. And it allows me then to use the categories and tagging system for all my experiments. What you're seeing on the front here is just some of the templates which I'm kind of happy with. And I wanted a quick reference to the template section. So these are linking to the actual template itself. So should any of my DAT files that are on my other site seem to have one of these templates being a bit not so great, if something's wrong on it, I can go quickly in here, go into the template, resave out the DAT file and send those to the other sites and correct things. So that's what I'm doing on that. So you'll probably want to set up your own method, but I thought I'd just share what I've done. So the first thing you're probably going to want to know about is how to save that DAT file because it's not there by default in Beaver Builder. So in order to do that, 
you need to go into settings into the beaver builder section then you need to go into user access all of this information by the way is on the knowledge base and then you go into here which i think by default is not set to anyone so you need to set that to a role so you can export things and as soon as you do that under tools you get this template exporter which shouldn't be there before and i'll go back to the knowledge base article because this highlights the options that you've got here. So you end up with some sections here where you can save whatever individually, but you've got some for Beaver Thema layouts, the page or uh, layout templates here, rows, columns, and modules here, and then you just export this template data. Now, I should mention on columns, you can export this as a DAT, but what you'll probably notice here is that there is no place in the UI to show those. So if you really wanted to move over your columns as things are at the moment, then you would need to use the regular save templates. I've made a request. But I suspect maybe they will do something so that kind of ties up and makes sense. But that's how things are at the moment. You're not going to be able to show your columns. So once you save that, let me just show you, you've got a DAT file like this. So the next thing you're going to want to do, obviously, is to add this to your next site. So you've exported it, it needs to go into the receiving site. And there are two ways shown in the article. For theme authors, they can bake this functionality into the theme itself. But what I'm using for this is the plugin method. And if I go down to, let's find it, register your template somewhere here, we should see, there we are. There's an example plugin which you can use. So once you've taken this plugin, it works as it is, and you can install that into the receiving sites, and all should be good. So let me just show you that because I have downloaded it here. You'll need to do one other thing. You'll need to go into it and you'll need to take this out and re-zip it. And probably what you'll want to do is to rename it. You might want to get rid of example, an example here on the main file. And if you do that, then you'll want to make sure that when you go in here that you remove all the other uh, um, examples here, wherever it is here, that's what I've done. I just removed everything that said example and left everything as it is. But if you know what you're doing, you can just change the name of the plugin as well. But you need to zip this section, which also contains this data file here. So you've got the DAT in here. And that's where you'll place in your new DAT. So it's as simple as that. And once you've uploaded it, then it's going to work as shown. There was one extra thing, though, I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to update all of this across all of the sites that we manage. Now, this has been quite an easy thing for me because I use main WP. So it's got a... Uh, an extension here called File Uploader. So if you're a main WP user and you've got their pro bundle, then you're laughing because you can use this from your interface. And as long as you know the URL of where your plugin is and the DAT file you're going to overwrite, you can just send this to all of the sites that you want. That's the method that I've been using. But I have a blog post article here. And if you go down to... Uh, this section here, you'll see I've also linked to a GitHub plugin which allows you to update. I haven't explored this because I don't need to, but there might be another way of you being able to update it. Otherwise, you might just want it on all new sites and then you'll just keep updating that one plugin. Okay, I think that's probably it. Apart from one thing I should mention, and that is this bit of code here. I've got to thank somebody, but I don't know who, so apologies for that. But they shared this in the Beaver Builder Facebook group from the Beaver Builder team. This is how you unset things that you don't want. So these are unsetting the things that are displaying the Beaver Builder pages, and this one here is the pre-built rows here. So if you want to keep some of these, you can just remove any line that you want. And this goes into your child themes functions PHP file. And that's it. As it's Black Friday while I'm recording this, I should mention something that's very related to this. And I will be doing a post on this at some other point. But um, there's Page Builder Cloud. There's nothing really like this. I've been waiting for something like this for a long time. I haven't used it too much at the moment because... 
of the setup that I'm just talking about. But if you're somebody who's working in a team or you're working with multiple page builders or you need to save your forms and your fields, then this might be something that you want to look into. Let me just go over to their site here. So they've got a Black Friday sale on, which is giving 50% on all plans here so as i understand it here we've got this drop down well it's right it's here before me so this is um 149 50 dollars for lifetime on their page builder cloud so it's difficult to assess this at the moment it, it works perfectly it does what it says it does it supports a whole bunch of page builders and also ACF and most of the well-known forms out there and other things like Essential Grid. There are some interesting things that they're planning to do. Um, some of that is to be able to, it only saves 10 page templates at the moment. They hope to be able to make that work on different sections. They're also working on something that sounds very ambitious where you might be able to save a template on one page builder to another page builder. So it's, it certainly seems interesting. So I thought I would mention it. And as it sails, if you were wondering about uh, what I was using on my site here, I can recommend because I know this is on sale for 30% off WP portfolio. You can get it as part of the package as I did as the Astra package. But I think it's a really good plugin. I've used it for so many different things. So I can definitely recommend that as well. Okay, that's enough of my Black Friday sales. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful. If it was, then please give me a thumbs up because it encourages me and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. I hope to see you on another video soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.